All right, I know most of these requests are for Artie as well, but I'm going to delay on that video for as long as I physically can. High explosive shells. Those annoying little things that seem to always find you and kill at least half of your crew with 20 damage. After the no longer so recent changes, I see even more complaints about high explosive shell usage and players raging at how their 10,000 credit Hess shell from their FE4005 was absorbed by an EBR 105's black hole. I'm sorry, I mean wheel. Well, this video is here to explain how high explosive works and some tactics around playing with and against them. This will obviously include high explosive variations, including Hesh and Hep, as they function exactly the same. This will not be covering artillery shells, as they have their own mechanics, and I hate them. Here's the thing, I'm very late on this video. If you already understand the new shell mechanics, please skip to the strategy sections instead. Thank you, and I'm sorry. First off, high explosive mechanics before impact. Well, let's start with the easy mechanics. What's the difference between HE and Hesh and Hep? Well, Hesh and Hep typically have more penetration. That's it. All forms of HE also typically have a far slower shell travel time and higher shell arc than the other shells. They do not lose any penetration over distances, so while it may take a long time to reach the target, it will have the same penetration. HE shells also typically do more critical or module damage than other shell types. High explosive shells have far lower penetrations than your standard shells. They also have higher base damage, but that's only if they penetrate. They will always, however, do some damage on impacts, but that's partially a lie, and I'll explain that in the next section. High explosive shells usually cost about the same as standard shells on a tank, with a little bit of a higher cost. There are some exceptions, particularly premium HE shells like the Hesh shells on the FE4005 or any of the other British tanks that carry Hesh. Next up, high explosive mechanics on impact. This is the part that players seem to be the most confused about, so I'll try to simplify the explanations. To fully understand the new high explosive mechanics, we have to understand some basic armor mechanics. The game recognizes two different types of armor. Spaced armor, also known as screens, so if you see that annoying screen not penetrated, that's what they mean. And also what I'll be referring to as base armor. Spaced armor includes the gun mantlet, tracks, and any other armor that is located outside of the base armor, like the screen doors duct taped to an IS-2 shielded. Base armor is every other type of armor that is directly connected to the tank. For example, turret cheeks, lower plates, and rears very rarely have spaced armor before the base armor. So how does this armor work with high explosive? Well, high explosive previously exploded on its first contact. This means that HE hitting a wall, tracks, or an enemy gun would have caused the shell to instantly explode and damage anything within a sphere around the area. New high explosive, however, is given penetration before the explosion. This means that if it contacts a wall or a track, the impacted object will lower the shell's penetration value based on that item's armor value and then explode once the shell runs out of penetration. Now, that's the complicated explanation. Let me simplify it a bit with an example. Let's say we fire a high explosive shell with 250 millimeters of penetration. This shell punches through a wall before coming into contact with the tank it hits. Let's say the wall has an armor value of 100 millimeters. Our high explosive shell now has 150 millimeters of pen that still needs to be calculated against the enemy armor. The same mechanic happens when you hit a track or spaced armor, but even worse. Your shell loses three times the penetration when it hits spaced armor than if it hits anything else. Also, if you do not penetrate the spaced armor, then you will do no damage whatsoever, as the shell wouldn't reach the base armor. So what does this mean? Well, it means that you are now able to shoot enemies with HE shell types through a wall or through spaced armor. However, because you lose so much penetration value by doing it, I highly recommend avoiding shooting through semi-destructible cover or tracks anyway. Much like a majority of internet fanfiction artists and video game companies alike fail to consider, just because you can doesn't mean you should. Finally, let's talk about how the shell is actually damaging the impacted vehicle. We know that spaced armor doesn't matter, as we have to hit the actual base armor to do damage. What this also means is that if we shoot, say, a black hole below where the enemy tank's base armor is and the shell reaches the dirt, we will do no damage to the tank itself besides taking off its black hole. But if we penetrate the shell through the black hole and into the base armor, then... So let's say we've broken through all of the spaced armor and we finally reach the base armor. First, the game figures out if the shell can penetrate the base armor. The penetration calculation occurs directly at the point your shell impacts the base armor. This is calculated with angles, penetration, and armor thickness taken into account. You can tell if you're going to penetrate high explosive by checking the penetration indicator on your cursor. Green means full damage at point of impact, yellow means it won't penetrate, but it will impact the base armor, meaning that you'll get some damage, and red means it will not reach the base armor or it will ricochet, meaning absolutely no damage. If it penetrates, congrats, you do a lot of damage because the HE has a lot of alpha damage. If not, then the shell calculates damage based on fragmentation. 
The shell hits the armor and always explodes fragments of the shell into the enemy tank. And when I say you always do damage no matter what gun is hitting whatever base armor, I mean always. Okay, I realize that segment doesn't fit in this video at all, but once you make it, you really just can't take it out. Anyway, back to the actual video. If you actually manage to hit the base armor, that means that you're going to leave fragmentation, as we just saw in that last clip, however silly it may be, in the actual tank. These fragments explode in a cone shape from the point of impact, doing damage to critical modules within that cone. This means that if you shoot at the fuel tank, you'll probably do critical damage to the fuel tank, but you won't kill the commander. Because of this new mechanic, you will still get quite a few critical hits, but it's far more difficult to actually do damage to the opponent without aiming your shots carefully. The main difference between new mechanics and the old mechanics is that now we are calculating directly on the point of impact, so weak spots do count. Now that we've gotten all the boring mechanics out of the way, let's go on to the fun part, which is tactics. This is also divided into two sections, basic and complex. First, the basics. High explosive is supposed to be a last resort. Unlike with most other shells in World of Tanks, it's not a question of when not to use High Explosive, but when to use High Explosive. High Explosive is effective, as I previously stated, against poorly armored targets. This means certain light tanks, tank destroyers like the Rheimatel Borsig Waffenträger and artillery are typically worthwhile High Explosive targets. However, if you can kill a target in the same amount of shots with Standard as you can with High Explosive, then shoot Standard. If you find an M44 while you're in your T3485, it is still usually better to fire standard and not high explosive, simply for being able to do the damage consistently. High explosive is now simultaneously more effective and less effective against poorly armored targets than it was previously. It is effective because you are able to penetrate through spaced armor, so even if you miss the Type 64's hull and hit their track, with enough penetration you can still go through the vehicle. However, the new high explosive also requires you to carefully aim your shots. Try to hit the base armor as much as possible and avoid any spaced armor. Try to shoot high explosive at stationary targets at long range, more so than moving targets. The long shell travel time makes leading targets much more difficult. High explosive is also very effective against targets at range on low health. You can kill a Jagdpanzer U100 across the map with an EBR-105 just by hitting the top end of his tank with your HE. If you can't pen with HE, fire at the lowest base armor thickness without caring much for armor angle. If you can pen, aim for the flattest surface of armor. And obviously you want to avoid spaced armor as much as possible, so try to hit the base armor. Use High Explosive to reset the cap circle. You only need to do critical damage, so High Explosive at the tracks of a capping tank is almost always effective. Remember, as long as you hit base armor, you will do damage and therefore you will get a reset. Try to flank before firing High Explosive. Now that you can penetrate spaced armor, sides of vehicles are usually more consistent with damage than previously. High Explosive is also good at knocking down trees and buildings, particularly buildings, as High Explosive shells can destroy two parts of a semi-destructible house with a single shell. As far as trees go, you really have to have a higher caliber weapon to be able to knock down trees. Uh, it seems like Wargaming really wants the tree knockdown mechanic to happen, as they've mentioned it in a lot of their videos. Here's the thing, it's not very useful unless you are in a Clan Wars type situation where you are able to have one of your larger caliber guns shoot down a tank with HE for your light tank to drive into it. Literally every other situation, it's not worth the shells. Don't try digging out hold down tanks with high explosive anymore. There's really no point. If you're fighting an invincible tank that's hold down, your best choice is to leave. Technically, you can do damage with HE, but it will take so long that you'll waste a lot of your time. And in random battles, you want to be doing damage pretty consistently in order to have a good result. You'll have to avoid getting into those situations in the first place. So if you see an s -conk on the enemy team that's going to be going to a specific position on the map, and you know for a fact that you're not going to be able to penetrate a hold down s -conk because, you know, most tanks cannot, then just leave it alone. 
High explosive tactics didn't really change all that much for heavier tanks. All you have to do to counter high explosive spam is to make sure that you have your best armor facing the high explosive. Get the opponent to shoot your turret, your front, anything. Obviously, spaced armor is the best to block damage. Just keep them from getting your sides and rear armor. Also, if they're continuously spamming you with HE, just move out of the way. Even paper tanks aren't necessarily screwed against high explosive. Make sure your armor is angled against high explosive to prevent total penetration and try to bait shells into your tracks as much as possible. Just because high explosive can penetrate walls and screens doesn't mean it's easy at all. Limit the shell's penetration before it reaches you and you'll be fine, even in a Type 64. And now for the complex stuff. This doesn't mean it's hard to understand, but more so that it's hard to pull off correctly. First, if you are playing against someone in a close range and heavy tanks, as soon as they fire high explosive, get closer to them. They are likely to continue firing high explosive, meaning that your standard shells are now at an advantage in a 50-50 fight in the open, instead of simply letting them chip away at you. If you can't get close enough to them or pen them consistently as trade, it is better to just disengage. I see people all the time trading in fights they are clearly losing, then dying, then raging at their deaths, most likely by saying that their death was somehow due to teammates. If you are losing a fight, leave it alone. Let the opponent push you, move to a different location. Literally anything besides sitting in front of a tank that is shooting you more than you were shooting them. You can also use that last tip to your advantage as bait. Fire a single high explosive shell at your opponent, typically inspiring them to rush you. At that point, you should switch back to your standard shells in order to win the 50-50 fight. Bonus points if you tap the standard shell a single time to prep that shell for your next loading. This works best when you want to bring a mid-distance fight into a close range fight. High Explosive now does critical damage depending on the part of the enemy tank hit. This means that firing High Explosive at the commander's hatch means it's more likely that your enemy's commander will die, along with some other vital necessities. Do with that information what you will. When leading targets with HE from long range, aim slightly below where the enemy will be going. This is because High Explosive shell travel paths have more of an arc than other shells, meaning that it will travel above where you aim when leading a target. High Explosive is also very good for circling opponents. In my faster mediums or light tanks, I like to fire High Explosive as my first shot or two while rushing an opponent. Fire into the tracks alone to maximize your chances of taking out the opponent's mobility, then switch to typical shells to continue doing damage while shooting the tracked drive wheel to keep them in place. And that's it for the High Explosive Guide. I'm getting very rusty at these World of Tanks guides. Let me know if you guys would like this type of video for other shell types as well, and I'll also probably, maybe, make the RD type video eventually, but I need to work up my courage for that one. Feel free to leave any requests down in the comments, I'm still reading literally all of them. And happy tanking.